Hi, my name is Ryan Champlin from SAP. I am Senior Director of Product Marketing for SAP HANA. And with me today is Mustafa Mustafa from Ferrara, maker of great sweet snacks such as Sweet Tarts, Trolley, Black Forest, and now also Keeblers, just to name a few. Mustafa, could you introduce yourself today and say a few words about your role at Ferrara? Yeah, so nice to be here with you. Thanks for having this dialogue with me, Ryan. So my name is Mustafa. I am currently the Senior Director of Analytics and Technical Shared Service at Ferrara. I am managing and leading the BI team, the application development team, integration team, enterprise architecture. But my most favorite role is business partner, really understanding the, our stakeholders, being able to map a variety of different uh, people, process, and technology capabilities to really solve some of the challenges we have within our organization. Fantastic. So why don't we start a little bit at the beginning. So Mustafa and I have known each other for a number of years. Uh, fantastic uh, partner with SAP and just done a lot of great things with our technology. And so why don't you go back and just tell us a little bit about who Ferrara is as a company uh, and your experience there. So Ferrara has been around for over a century, uh, starting in 1908. And we're based out of Chicago and Ferrara comprises of many acquisitions of brands and organizations over the past years. And so in 2012, uh, Ferrara Pan and Farley and Sathers had merged together and created a larger organization. I was brought on board at that time, 2014, to help manage their business intelligence portfolio, being able to bring together some of their uh, cha the challenges that they currently had and being able to provide solutions using uh, the latest and greatest technology that existed back in 2014. Thanks, Mustafa. So uh, since this is Tech Ed, let's talk a little bit about technology next. So can you give us a little bit of a background on the overall technology landscape uh, at uh, Ferrara? Sure. So we started with uh, our ERP, and that is our foundation, which is SAP ECC. We have a variety of different technologies supporting niche areas within the organization. We are a manufacturing organization, so it requires us to have certain tool sets uh, that are best in class for manufacturing. We currently use SAP APO for our planning. We have uh, Salesforce.com for our CRM, and we have uh, a PLM for our recipe management tool. And so that's just a sh short list of the many of tools that we have, some within SAP and some outside of the SAP landscape. Uh, we, uh, when I arrived in 2014, we were leveraging uh, SAP BW, and a lot of folks were not leveraging the capability BW at the time. It was in its uh, infancy stage. And the challenges were many of the folks within the organization were leveraging Excel as their main application for managing infra data, as well as uh, Microsoft Access. Okay, thanks for the, the context. Now let's talk a little bit more about the data management and analytics area specifically. So I guess what kind of issues uh, within the organization as a whole, both on the business and IT side, were kind of driving the original adoption of SAP HANA and some of the analytics tools that you also use from SAP? So when I arrived, one of the seven strategic imperatives of the organization was a lack of reports and analytics. And the symptoms of not having an enterprise reporting and analytics environment is people were sharing incorrect information. There was no single source of truth. It was time consuming to render information left and right from different data sources and Two analysts had two different perspectives of putting that information together, which people tend to come to meetings and they're talking the same language, but yet data is being derived from different locations. And so with that being said, it was so important that we were able to uh, look at that as one of our key challenges. Second was people needed information to be more real time. We were loading data at the enterprise level on a daily basis, but at times when we were looking towards month end, we really needed to be able to drive uh, results quickly so we can make critical decisions at the time, that, at the most appropriate time. And then lastly, with uh, 
BW in its infancy stage, when I arrived, really there was no enterprise level reporting. We needed to be able to figure out how do we uh, simplify the technology landscape to enable our analyst to really take the portion of analyzing and focus on that and allow IT to do the IT work of setting up an environment that allows them to render that information easily at their fingertips when they needed it. So if I'm, I'm hearing you right here, just kind of summarize that. So wrong information, um, no single source of truth. You've got data spread all over the organization, people with different spreadsheets coming to meetings, you know, arguing about whose number is right, not able to get them the information that they need in the time they need it, and then really didn't have the tool set yet to even deliver a more broad uh, strategy across the company for that. So where did you really start your journey with making improvements on some of these issues and dealing with, I'd say, maybe the people process standard side of things, not even before you decided to make some tool selection? Yeah, so with any digital transformation, I break it up into four components. Number one is establishing a governance. So how do we operate, in essence, an operating model? How do you operate to be able to meet the needs of the business, to collaborate with the business, to develop trust amongst the business and so forth? So. I have an acronym called Keep It Sweet and Simple. It's the KISS acronym, but we changed it because we're a sweet company. Um, and so with that, it was really focusing on keeping it sweet, meaning giving value to the organization, but also keeping it so simple for us to maintain the documentation, allow the analysts to focus on being able to get information that's required. And that was really the biggest driver to, uh, to provide the visibility that was required to the business. Um, that's the first. The second component is uh, culture. We needed to build, a, our team was quite small. We needed to build a team that would be able to be robust, uh, break the barriers between the silos to ensure that we're able to really drive value. So we created a super user community across every functional area within the organization to allow a representative from the reports and analytics team to be integrated with their team on the business side that would be the first level of support for any of the end users that had any questions within that functional area. They knew the technology, they understood the process that loaded the information into the system, and they understood the, the needs of the end user. So no one has better insight to that capability uh, more than the super user. And so culture would, needed to be established. The third was execution. We needed to be able to deliver results on a cadence that enabled us to uh, provide value. And that was uh, focused on a monthly deliverable. That monthly deliverable uh, enabled us to meet monthly with our super users, be able to understand the business owner's needs and challenges, meet with leadership team to understand what their goals were and if any of them had pivoted. And then we would determine what would be in that monthly package. And we would build to that monthly cadence and deliver and that enabled that trust because we would always uh, deliver to the needs of the most uh, needed items that were required for that month. And lastly, partnership. So without partnership uh, it would be a big challenge because we have resources internally that are very focused, hyper-focused even to certain technologies. So we needed partners to come in to guide us with the latest and te greatest technology that exists in the market space allowed them to implement it up front, but then cross train and train our internal resources so that they can grow within their knowledge base, but also be able to handle future development and support within that environment. So the four categories it were governance, culture, execution, and partnership. Fantastic. So then you've got this, this baseline in place in terms of processes and standards and some governance around the, the, the enterprise level data that you needed to manage. And then from there, you, you moved into making a technology selection, and, and, and this was early on, I think, what, 2012, 13, somewhere in there, where you picked HANA Enterprise Edition, uh, some of the SAP analytics technologies. I know you also use SAP SLT uh, for some of the data movement. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about how you made those technology selections and you know what were some of the technical benefits that you were looking at when you made those choices. So for us, we had BW uh, as our enterprise reporting tool, even though it was in its infancy stage, it still was a functional tool. It was BW on top of Oracle. And so what we had done is I created a proof of concept between uh, BW and various aspects of different technologies. And uh, 
Uh, one in particular we tested was BW versus HANA. And the, one of the scenario I'll share with you guys today was we, when we first executed that scenario in BW, it took us six minutes to go through nine steps. And then we did that exact same example, loaded data in HANA, and that six minutes was dropped to three minutes. And when we uh, then optimized HANA, so that was just literally database change going from BW on HANA, I mean BW Oracle to BW on HANA, that was just a database change. It went from six minutes to three minutes. Then we optimized HANA, simplified our, our model, and it went from three minutes down to two minutes. Then what we decided to do was let's go ahead and put business objects on top of HANA and it went down from two minutes down to seconds. So it was a huge paradigm shift to see that transition between le leveraging BW to going on business objects on HANA. That for us uh, was a strong business case to proceed. Also, business objects was able to satisfy every stakeholder's needs. So first was you, for finance folks, they, they got a l strong love for Excel. Well, business objects had analysis for office. Second was salespeople. Sometimes they really just didn't want to have to deal with Excel and they just wanted something emailed to them or some type of portal where they can go check something out on uh, their iPad, their iPhone or so forth. And so that was web intelligence. So that just that provided them that value. And then the third was the ability to slice and dice and monitor KPIs um, and be able to really drill down without noise. And that's where we came up with a dashboarding tool, which was Lumira. And so with that portfolio, uh, any person in the past few years that had a request, we were able to give them the right tool at the right time and, and that would give them the right information. And that really drove home that value proposition. Fantastic. So one of the areas that I think people think of HANA, they think in-memory performance, so faster queries. But I think one of the big value props for, for your team in terms of development times in IT, as well as the speed at which you can now deliver to engineering, is that in-memory capability delivers what we call a virtual data model. So a way that you can basically replicate your original data uh, pre present a model that works for the different business users you have in the organization. But if you need to make changes to that model, you can do that much simpler than what you would have had to do in the past with other ETL tools and storing uh, aggregate data sets and those sorts of things. Now that turnaround time for you to make changes to business rules and logic is significantly faster. I mean, maybe you can talk a little bit about what that process looks like today versus maybe what it was before in terms of where you're seeing um, some of those technical efficiencies come through. Yeah, as a BW developer in my career, I understood the level of effort to build a model, build aggregation so it ran quickly. Uh, spent, I would say, a minimum quarter of my time dealing with loads that failed or reloading data and telling the business, hey, stop, stop working in procurement. Don't enter in another order for the sales team. I need to reload the BW cubes so that we have a good snapshot and we can start the deltas appropriately. Uh, that was the past. With going to HANA, we were able to replicate in real time these tables that I had to prevent the business from operating so I can uh, replicate. So SLT was the first uh, paradigm shift within the, I consider the data um, warehouse landscape where SLT would be able to render data in real time from the time it hits ECC to the time it comes into our HANA environment. Within seconds, we're able to see that data uh, and therefore, I no longer had to deal with loads. So right there, boom, 25% to 50% time savings, not having to deal with data loads any longer. Second component was, it's with HANA, you're able to do SQL development, whereas with uh, BW was all the five-star schema. So you had a lot of modeling that r was needed to be able to execute effectively. So with HANA, we were able to leverage a uh, querying. If I wanted to add a field, I just changed the query and added one field. That was zero effort, like take seconds. Whereas in BW, if I wanted to add a field or remove a field, I might have to reload the entire cube. So that could be a day, two days worth of effort. So what we were seeing is we were building models in HANA from BW's perspective, which would take us months in BW. We were doing it in weeks with HANA. And that really drove up the value proposition internally within the IT team. So what ended up happening is I was able to, to manage a team of just a few people, but the results were outperforming any of the data warehouse teams 
that I've been part of since um, since I've been part of data warehousing. So it was quite impressive to see the output that was delivered with uh, based on that capability. And then lastly, one thing I do, I do would like to know is that we also, HANA has a modeling tool. It has a, it's a data base, but also it has a front end tool. And we actually leverage that front end tool to allow our users to generate uh, reports and then be able to update those reports by adding comments and then those comments get saved to the database and are available in every report that comes out of the system. So it's also an application tool. So it's it's been unique to have uh, a stack that's able to do all three things, database, modeling, as well as front-end transactional system. Yeah, and so that application development capability is delivered by the, the access engine there, right? So you're able to build a custom application, doing both not only the analytics component in that application, but also some transactions where you're able to update some data and bring some context to some of your end consumers, right? Yeah, so if you think about it, the, the cool part about it is somebody is in a dashboard and they see something, right? They, we remove the noise, they see what their challenge is, but now they want to add a comment so that their leadership team could recognize that there's an issue. Uh, we have a link that takes them to the app, uh, to HANA, Data development services and they are able to see an application that comes up with that record. They go enter the comment and then they hit save and then they go back to the dashboard and they hit refresh and you see the comment. So it's really exciting to really tie the tools together to be able to have that user experience that's uh, seamless. All right. Thanks, Mustafa, for the, the overview of some of the you know, technical reasons why you chose SAP HANA. Could you talk a little bit about some of the major business outcomes from implementing this technology and, and how it's helped your organization? In standardized enterprise reporting, we're giving people the right information at the right time with the right tools. And so this really shifted the organization for we were our analysts were always doing IT work. So we took the IT portion out of their job and so that they can analyze. What we found was that self-service really enabled the analysts to be able to provide insights to their organization that helped the organization move forward. And with it being real time and, the, and the, the speed in which they were able to get the information and have it at their fingertips, removing that noise really enabled the business. And, and the perfect example of how that all plays out is we recently bought uh, Nestle U.S. Confections and then a year later purchased uh, Keebler from Kellogg's. And with these acquisitions that were major, we were able to reduce the time it took to be able to integrate the data from their environment into ours. When we merged in 2012 with Farrar, Pan, and Farley and Sathers, it took us two years to integrate that data. And it tends to happen across other companies after the ERP is integrated. In this scenario, with Nestle U.S. Confections, we were able to pull in the data, build out the models, build out new hierarchies to, in it, to show the lines of businesses merging within three weeks after close. Once we got, that was us getting good. Then we even got better. By the time we acquired Keebler, we were able to integrate the Keebler data day one. So we had all the structures shut up. So when the, we closed business, all the data flowed into those structures. They already integrated. We had updated the hierarchies and so forth. So it was an, an amazing, amazing feat. And we, we just went live recently with Keebler. So it took almost about, I would say a year and a half later, we went live with Keebler. So fully integrated in our environment. So what shows is that we were able to give visibility to sales and demand within weeks or days leveraging this technology. And that was a huge paradigm shift again from what we had experienced and what the, our stakeholders had experienced in the past. Right, so really enabling your sales, supply chain, and others to get insights into the company's data that you've acquired uh, so they can make the right adjustments and how that mix is gonna fit into your current business to better work with your retailers, your wholesalers, et cetera, before that legal acquisition even completely closed, right? Right, and, that, and that's that's really in essence mind boggling because that's just something that uh, is unheard of in, 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 as it relates to data warehousing and, and BI. We're always an afterthought versus the key driver. Right, now you, you guys have used uh, HANA and some of the SAP analytics tools for a lot of years now. Um, thinking back to when you started and what was made you successful, can you give some examples of 
to everybody listening to this in terms of how they can get started with Hana and how you transitioned your team into working with our technology? So as I talked about, it's important to have governance, execution, culture, partnership, right? That's solid. You have an operating model. And that's with all digital transformation. Now, with execution, understand the roadmap to delivering the highest value to the organization with the least amount of uh, development time. So what we call the low-hanging fruit. So make sure you, you... you develop a roadmap, you execute to that roadmap, focus on the low hanging fruit, deliver at a cadence that provides value on, a, on a, every month. And what we ended up seeing is there was a trust. Trust that was built between our stakeholders and, and our IT team that we were able to deliver and we were making our lives simpler. That then transitions into many other functional areas wanting to get and be part of it because then they themselves as analysts are becoming uh, key fundamental resources within their group to drive value, remove that noise, and work cross-functionally because the super user community met cross-functionally. So we got to know one another, which broke down those silos. And then that allowed our teams to be able to uh, bring value time and time again, and we were able to finish our full roadmap for the whole organization within two years, which is, again, unheard of with a small staff to be able to load the ECC APO data within our environment. Lastly, uh, internally, IT. So our folks were ABOPers. They were they worked in other technologies at other companies, but they knew SQL. So converting our resources from ABOPers into HANA developers was easy because, in essence, they've experienced how to develop in queries before, and so the transition from ABAP or BW to HANA was seamless, and that allowed our growth internally within our own teams. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time today, Mustafa, and for sharing your great experience you have at Ferrara. So for everyone listening, I want to make sure that you're aware that we, uh, within the ASUG organization, have something called the SAP HANA Think Tank, and Mustafa is the volunteer chair. Uh, for that think tank organization. It really allows you a a great way to engage with other HANA users uh, and share insights. So maybe Mustafa, you wanna just mention a few notes about that and encourage everyone to join. Yeah, it's it's really, think about any challenges you're having in in terms of data warehousing. It doesn't even necessarily have to go with HANA in particular, but what we do in that is we take a topic and with thought leaders, we brainstorm on how to uh, provide opportunities or solutions that you can take home with you and apply in your organization. So it's a great way if, if you find a topic that really is one of the challenges you have, uh, join so that you can help with the brainstorming, tell us your perspective, what's your challenge, and then hopefully come out with a solution that you can take after just a short period of time. So if you're interested in that, check out the ASUG website and look for the SAP HANA Think Tank meetings. Thanks again for your time today, Mustafa. Have a great day. Thanks for having me.